brains of our flight simulator. This is the computer right inside here. The computer is inside its own protective foam that it uh, shipped with when it came from the factory. Cut in appropriate venting holes and here is one heck of a cooling fan. I also replaced the sides with pegboard for ventilation. This is what the cooling fan looks like on the outside. This is the temperature indicator, the uh, thermometer, thermometer that we have hooked up to, well, the probe is actually inside the computer case, so we can monitor how hot it is inside there. That's the inside, the temperature inside the case. And this is the temperature in the basement right now. now. I took some very careful temperature readings, a lot of very careful temperature readings, and I determined that with the fan on and the doors closed, it's actually cooler than it would be with no fan and the doors open. So I'm able to keep this computer cooler inside the box than the computer just sitting there by itself. Now I have a lot of cables coming from the computer to the flight simulator, but they're all inside this fantastic umbilical that I set up. Look at this thing, it looks like it's straight out of the Gemini program. Now these two parts separate for when I transport it. I can uh, load this into the truck and then load the, the computer separately. It's all hooked up right here. Very simple, I just use the Velcro that I like to use. And right here, are all the different uh, USB connectors, power connectors, monitor connectors that run max flight simulator. So, whenever we bring the flight simulator to any events, we just run roll it off the truck, hook up everything right here, attach the umbilical, very easy, and then we just plug in the computer box with just one cord. Now the old hockey helmet's been working just fine, but I think people will really be interested in wearing my new cheap Chinese motorcycle helmet. I think people will really get excited over this. Just got to repaint it a little bit. started ex experimenting with different shapes for the uh, fuselage and we're using PVC pipe here. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to use that as a framework for the body panels, uh, but it certainly helps when we try to visualize the final shape for this flight simulator. I changed the position of the counter counterweights here, the way I did that was this front uh, deck was underneath the supporting 2x4, so I moved it up and actually put it on top of the 2x4, so I effectively raised this weight by three and a half inches. 
And I did that because I started to get the feeling that this piece needed to be level when the simulator was in a balanced equilibrium position. I started to suspect that that's what the, the weights were trying to do as they balanced out each other. In addition to that, I started to suspect that the reason we had a, a persistent nose-up attitude when we were flying level is because of the lengths of the chains. The front chains were shorter than the rear chains, and I thought that we could just balance things out and that'd be fine. I'm, I'm convinced or more convinced that the front chains need to be the same length as the rear chains. So I've started to make that, that adjustment. When we do that, we're actually changing the center of gravity for the entire flight simulator. So this seat has to be pushed back, and it has been pushed back. The goal here is to have a perfectly balanced simulator, so when a person gets in and out of this seat, no matter how heavy or light they are, the balance doesn't change. Now this is our pitch potentiometer. I extended the length of this actuator arm. It's about twice as long as it was before. Works great.